So in our last Phasmid Files video, the Brockphasma spinofemoralis, we showed how placid and easily handleable that stick insect species is. Today, we are actually going for the complete and up to polar opposite. Stick insects that are actually really quite difficult to handle for today's episode. So I have no idea how this is gonna go. It's gonna be good fun though, right? and welcome back to Bug Rounds. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So this is actually being filmed directly after my Brock Phasma video. I'm tired, I am not prepared for running around after these guys. Oh, I hope they behave for today's video. Now, the species we are going to be showing today is the Lamashodi species, Noi Chua Noi. I don't actually know the name of the provenance, but they're also known as Lamashodi's species yellow stripe. So that's how I'm gonna to refer to them as, just because I'm butchering the names of locality. Now we're actually gonna start this video by looking at over. I have collected a few over here for you to look at. We don't always manage to feature over in our videos, so I thought it's best to start with these. So let's take a look at these, and then we'll have a look at some adult specimens. So here they are. So this is actually placed on vermiculite, so ignore the vermiculite, just focus on those yellow dots of eggs. Now you see how they're clustered together. These guys do lay them in sort of clusters. Now they'll do this on the substrate or they'll do it in cracks or even sometimes between leaves or bits of bark. It's best to supply some bark and things in there to avoid them kind of making these clusters within the leaves because you might well accidentally be binning some eggs on changing day. Pretty cool though, right? Nice, pretty, beige, slightly sticky eggs. Pretty cool. Now's the fun part of trying to show you some specimens. So I've just opened a cage and you can see they're already on the move. Now this is a mature male that you can see right here. And there is another mature male just here. So we're gonna try and take one of these out. Now I do have to be cautious because they do have a liquid spray and it is quite potent, it is quite smelly, and I really don't want that kind of spray secretion all over my hands. But it is quite likely that they might do it, although you probably won't be able to actually see it happen on the camera. And look at this. Okay, it's on my sleeve, but I need to close the enclosure before I continue. Where is it? had to take my dressing gown off to find him. These guys are difficult to handle. And it's not really the spray that bothers me, it's how fidgety these guys are. They do not like to stay still. I've been putting off filming these guys for ages. Look at him go. So he is running on my bed. We have not managed to get him to stay still whatsoever yet. Oh, oh are we staying still? Yes. So here we have a male specimen. He's around about six to seven centimeters in length, and he looks like a cartoon character. I would like to go get my macro lens on that eye, but I just don't want him to move. Shall we give it a go? Yes, we did it. You see what I mean? Almost cartoony appearance with that bright eye, with that green body, slightly reddish antenna, black going across the back with yellow stripes, hence the name yellow stripe. Now I love males, they're really, really skinny, really scrawny. If you were to look at one from the abdomen and you start scrolling, you would think this is just your bog standard looking stick insect. And then you move on to those darker patches with the yellow stripes, cartoony eyes and red antenna, as we said. They've even got little black dots on the knee joints. And they go kind of beige-ish, beige beige-ish, beige beige-ish at the end of the legs. Now, although these are frantic, I do love them. Don't get me wrong. It's just that they are a nightmare. Now, these guys on feeding day are going to be a pain. I'm not going to lie to you, especially when there's nymphs, they will scarper. 
and they will escape if they can. So you have to be super, super careful. I recommend getting a secondary enclosure or tub and literally just placing them all in a completely different area when you change that food plant because you could really risk these guys getting out and running away. So these guys are Vietnamese, they are a Vietnam species, probably why I couldn't pronounce the locality properly. Um, and their PSG number is 384 if you guys wanted to look them up. Look how derpy he looks. I don't ever really use that word, my daughter does, but that is pure derp, right? That is a derp face, derpy stick insect. Really, really cool. Now, I would like to put this male back so that we can talk about the female. Would you guys like to see what a female looks like? I'm sure you would. Now bear with me then guys, because it might be a bit of a fight to get her out. Now this gal did just spray. Um, sorry I didn't get it on camera. She's still wet to the touch from where the glands were. Just trying to get her to a motion to stay still for you guys. I know this isn't very professional filming on my bed, but I've got nowhere large scale to film these guys when they move so much. Now they do have little hissy fits when you try to pick them up initially. If they feel disturbed, they will jump to the floor, drop to the floor. They will kind of like skits out like this with their legs and uh, basically just frantically kind of fit out um, to deter you away now I would like to discuss her when she stays still she's not gonna she is not gonna come on girl we've got people that want to learn about you here oh don't stay still now you're on my hand because this is a really awkward position and I would like to get the macro to show the guys. Can you just, you know. I'm gonna have to get back to you folks. I popped her on that wooden house that we used for uh, the Brock Phasma and she's finally stayed still. So let's get a macro on her and talk about adult female specimens. So females get around about nine, 10 centimeters in length which means you need a 30 centimeter enclosure smallest, but I would recommend going at least 40 if you possibly can. Now I keep the flooring of these guys with tissue paper and I keep that tissue paper moist at all times just for air humidity, but I also give them a lot of ventilation so they have a decent amount of airflow. Pretty easy species to raise. I actually kept these before I did YouTube and ended up with hundreds of babies. Now back then I kept them in just a storage box with lots of ventilation and the same method with the flooring and just did so, so well. So she's very similar to the male in the fact that she has these red antenna, that she has this derpy cartoony face. Um, but along the back there, as you can see her black part is almost gray. It's a lot more faded and even the yellow is a lot less prominent. But she is longer and she has a much wider abdomen as you can see so although the males have the cooler characteristics i do think focus i do think the females have their own kind of quirk to them having those lighter tones isn't always a bad thing so the antenna are very long as you can see she's actually missing a part of one there probably when she's had a skits out while I'm changing the food plant. Now I wouldn't really recommend these for kids unless they were just being a visual species and that is because that spray is quite strong. It will make your eyes water, it will hurt if it goes up your nose, it won't be nice if it goes in your mouth and you certainly don't want it on cuts or broken skin. But if you're going to be the responsible parent, do all of the cleaning for the child as a display species, they're great. They're always out and about they don't hide that much. I see them on the sides of the enclosures, on the food plants, on the top, all day and all night. And as you know, these guys can really, really move when you open the doors. So it might have your kids laughing at you as you're failing to change the food plants, but I wouldn't have them handle them. Look at that, I've slightly moved 
this block and you see how easily they get frantic. Takes a little while for them to settle back down. Yes, you're not really trapped though, are you? You can just go upwards. <laughs> oh, yeah, look, look, hissy fit. Hissy fit, hissy fit. Come on, gal. You were being so well behaved just now. And they'll go for ages like this. She's going to climb my curtain now. I need to get her back down. Oh, well, what? You've gone in the side of it. Okay. Okay, I've got to grab her, guys. One second. Right, she's dropped to the floor. And we're just going to leave her there while I tell you about food plants. Because <laughs> she is proving very difficult to film. So, mine feed exclusively off privet but you can do privet. Hypericum is another really, really good one as well. Um, and also it's been known to eat lilac, although I've never tried lilac with mine. It's kind of a cool angle actually. You can see all the kind of different colors. You can even make out the sort of grainy coloration and texture along her back there. Never really noticed that slightly darker stripe central going across the abdomen from the thorax either. So. That's actually quite a cool position. I, I never really see them from this angle because they're so busy legging it. Now, another thing to bear in mind if you want these for breeding is their hatch rate is pretty good and the eggs only take around, what, maybe four months or so to hatch, something like that. So you can end up with lots very, very quickly. They're not a massive seller. I mean, I don't see them in the UK very often, which is why when I found a seller of these, I absolutely had to snatch them back up because I hadn't seen them since before my YouTube days. So we went years without kind of seeing many of these in the UK. So hopefully this guy has dispersed to a fair few different people and they can come back into the UK hobby. Now don't let me put you off with all this frantic behavior. If you've had some experience with a faster species of stick insect or even experience with a defensive species of stick insect so you can kind of get used to the movements then these would be fine for you. Um, I use a side opening vivarium for these but having top and side or even just top opening might be a little bit better because it'll be easier to control when you open it. So I'm going to attempt to put this lady back and we will be kind of ending this video because it's very, very difficult actually for me to provide you with much more information, especially when she's running around. And my eyes are actually a little bit itchy, a little bit sore, um, probably from where she has sprayed a few times when I've tried to pick her up and it may have well got in the air a little bit and onto my eyes. Um, you want to wash your hands every time you deal with these because like I said it won't feel good if I've only had slight particles going into my eyes and they're already a little sore then you need to bear that in mind and make sure your hands are washed my hands are stinking right now they are still cute though right might be an intermediate sort of species well really easy simple species to breed maybe intermediate to keep but uh Oh goodness me, we're going to have a lot of faff getting you, aren't we? Now we galley. Where's my hand there? Let's see if I can do it this way. Yeah, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Cling on, cling on for dear life. Sorry, I'm actually laying on my bed as I was dealing with her. Okay, let's put her back home. Well, that went pretty much how I expected it to. <laughs> a lot of frantic behavior and me unable to concentrate. Now, if you know me, I don't script my videos. I don't like to script my videos because I like to keep it raw and real for you guys to see how things really are in the hobby. Not that I've got anything against YouTubers that script a video. It's lovely, it's professional, they probably get more views, but that's just not who I am. And my God, I need to go and wash my hands and then probably my face as well. <laughs> I think that's gonna be it from me today though. But please let me know in the comments below, right? I've got a question for you. 
would you keep this species knowing how frantic they are doesn't matter whether you're allowed to by law or whatever just a generalized question if you were able to they were free you had the enclosures would you keep them based on their behaviors just let me know in those comments below thanks for watching guys take care and ooh, bye bye <laughs>